Good morning and happy Sunday morning to you. I'm glad that uh, we're able to once again connect, although not ideal, uh, recognizing that uh, it's so much better to be together on a Sunday morning uh, where we can see each other, where we can talk to each other, uh, where we can encourage each other face to face, where we can interact with each other. And I look forward to the days uh, where we can do that. And I do pray and I believe that those days are going to be coming pretty soon. Uh, but for now, we continue uh, to worship t with our families in our living rooms or wherever you might be, uh, watching our services online. Uh, I hope that you're watching the worship, the music from our main service. And uh, I'm going to once again put a couple of links for some songs that uh, have touched me this week and really uh, resonated with me this week as I've looked through this passage that we're going to talk about in just a few minutes. And I hope you're taking some time uh, to uh, worship together as a family, worship individually. Uh, let music uh, fill your soul. Let God encourage you. Uh, through good worship music, reminding you of the character and the nature of God. We do look forward to coming back together, and, and that'll be a great day for us. But this morning, we're going to look into 1 Peter chapter 4. Uh, but before we do that, I want to remind you of one thing that's coming up this afternoon at 1230, Sunday afternoon, 1230. We're having a parents' town hall meeting, kind of like what we did last quarter. We're going to do it just through Zoom this time, and the link to that is on the weekly email that went out this week on Wednesday. Sorry about that, got to, got to you a little late. Uh, but we're gonna have a parents meeting, a parents town hall meeting, just kind of interact a little bit about what's going on in high school ministry and what's going, going on going forward as we look into the summer and what the summer is gonna look like for us as best as we can tell right now. It'll be a great time just to think ahead and plan ahead and look forward to what God's going to do is we continue to build community, not just while we're apart, but then even when we get back together again. I am praying for you. I'm praying for your health. I'm praying for just your perseverance. Uh, and I pray that you allow God to show you something during this time to increase your faith uh, and to increase just your, your knowledge of him and your dependence upon him. This morning, we're going to look at 1 Peter chapter 4. We're going to look at the end of the chapter, verses 12 through 19. I've entitled this message, I Had This Yesterday. I'm going to explain that title in just a minute. We're going to read the passage in just a second. But before we do that, let's pray together. God, thank you for today. Thank you that you are with us. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God, we continue to thank you for the resources that we have. Though we can't meet in person, we can still meet together, and we can use technology to do that. And God, although we can't be face-to-face -face with each other, we know that we're also face-to-face -face with you. And God, even in the ways that we understand that together we're watching this separately, God, I pray that even in this time, you would allow us to think about what it's like to be with you when we can't see you face to face. But we know that you're with us. As followers of you, we know your spirit lives within us. And so, God, I pray that your spirit would speak to us during this time. During this time this morning and during our time when we're spending time by ourselves, spending time with our families, that, God, the spirit would minister to us, would speak to us. And, God, I pray for that right now. I pray this morning as we look into your word that your spirit would speak to us and that, God, we would understand what you want us to learn through this passage. God, show us something new. Show us something significant. Show us something important that we need to learn. God, I pray for these students. I pray for their families. I pray continued health upon them. I pray continued provision upon them. And God, as they enter into this last month of school, I pray, God, that you would help them to finish strong. I pray that you would encourage the seniors that while they're, uh, I'm sure, a little um, sad still thinking about graduation, going to be different, that, God, I pray that once again, you would encourage them with the accomplishments that they've made. So, God, I pray your, your blessing upon each one. I pray your encouragement upon each one. And now I pray your revelation upon us as we look into your word. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bibles, grab your Bible app uh, and open up to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4, uh, of course, we've been working our way through. Last week, we spent a lot of time in verse 9. 
talking about hospitality uh, and not grumbling. And I hope this week uh, you've been able to put into practice some of those things as well. But we're going to finish up that chapter today. Uh, we're going to start reading in verse 12. We're going to read through the last section of this chapter. And then we're going to look at a few points uh, that I've found as I work through that. I've also attached to this, either in the description, if you're watching this on the High School Ministries YouTube page, or if you grab this link off of the Shiloh Watch and Listen page off of our website, uh, these notes will also be here. But I put together a note page for you as well, uh, just to kind of follow through and just kind of see where we're going on this. But 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 19. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's suffering, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the Spirit of God, the Spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or a meddler. Yet as anyone who suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is the judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to the faithful creator while doing good. You know, I have to admit, when I first read this passage, I started thinking about and, and seeking the Lord on what to teach on this passage. As I read it, I thought, I've heard this before. I've been reminded of this throughout the book of 1 Peter. That seems like a, a summary and a reminder of what Peter's already written in this chapter. I kind of had that feeling that, uh, you know, when people ask you, what do you want to eat? And you kind of go through that whole thing of, ah, I don't know. And then you say, well, what do you feel like? You're like, ah, I don't know what I feel like. I don't know if that happens in your household. It happens in ours all the time. And I'll say, well, what about, uh, what about a hamburger? And usually Chrissy will say, nah, I don't really feel like a hamburger. Or if she says that to me, maybe I'll say, well, I had that yesterday. What about Mexican food? Oh, I had that a couple days ago. And we kind of go through this list, and if we've had it yesterday, we can't have it today. If we've done it once, we can't have it again right away. We do that with food. One of our kids, I won't tell you which one it is, but she's home from college right now. Uh, she doesn't really like eating leftovers because we just had that yesterday. Why do I want to eat it again today? And I kind of feel like this passage in 1 Peter is kind of like leftovers. Remember when I was in high school, we had a our cafeteria and then we had another section in the courtyard we had a little courtyard area uh, and it was an old ticket counter for our gymnasium but they converted that during lunch for uh, a kind of a, a speed um, grab-and-go type food but the only thing you could get there was a slice of pizza a plate full of french fries and a milkshake and it wasn't really even a milkshake I think it was frozen chocolate milk uh, I don't think I had any ice cream in it but it was quick. You could go. You knew exactly how much you needed. You knew exactly what you wanted. You didn't have to deal with the line in the cafeteria. And you got your pizza, your fries, and your milkshake. And those are the only three options. And I think I know people that for four years of high school, every day had pizza, fries, and a chocolate milkshake for lunch. They had the same thing over and over and over again. And I think there's sometimes we like that. But I think sometimes it's just the opposite, kind of like what I thought when I read this passage. I've heard this before. How am I going to teach something new? What, do I, what else do I have to learn from this passage? But I think it's important to realize that as Peter repeats things for us, there's things that we need to learn. There's different ways we need to look at things. There's different areas of our life, and there's different situations that we're in that we learn at different times. And I think that's what this passage is this morning. I was talking to Pastor Blake about this, and he told me about a, a preacher who one Sunday he got up and he preached his message, and afterwards people were like, oh yeah, that was a pretty good preacher, that was a great job, thanks for sharing that. And then the next Sunday he came and he preached the exact same message again. And a few people started to 
kind of catch what he what that he was preaching the same message again and they were kind of wondering what was going on but they didn't say anything the third week he gets up and he starts preaching the exact same message again and he gets a little ways through it and and finally somebody says well pastor just a minute you've preached this same exact message the last two weeks and the preacher looks at him and he says I know but you guys haven't done anything about it and I think that's the way when we approach scripture and we approach this passage like in first Peter chapter 4 verses 12 through 19 Peter's reminding us that we need to hear the message again because we need to do something about it. I don't know if you've ever looked at the back of your shampoo bottle, but uh, sometimes there's instructions. There's always instructions on the back of it. But I remember looking a long time ago at some instructions of the shampoo bottle, and it would say, lather, rinse, and repeat. And I thought, lather, rinse, and repeat. First of all, why do you need instructions on a shampoo bottle? But lather, rinse, repeat. And if you took that literally, you would get into this cycle. I remember this video that I saw. In fact, I'm going to show that to you right now. It's what it would look like if you literally took that instruction and followed through to the letter of the law on it. Check this out. Yo. It's not coming out. Oh my god, what kind of shampoo is this, yo? that guy running after me the good thing is the end of the clip shows that he finally calmed down he didn't punch the guy out actually gave him a high five and kind of laughed about what he was doing that's why I put the faith building thought for today it says when we follow Christ we need constant reminders that we are to live and think differently when we follow Christ we need constant reminders we need to be reminded over and over and over again that we're to live differently and we're to think differently that's what this book is all about it's what first Peter is all about that we have a different worldview we have a different mentality we have a different outlook on life we have different expectations on life and part of that is our expectations and our reactions when we suffer for the cause of Christ when we're set aside from our maybe our friends and from the world and from other people that don't understand what it's like to follow Christ. We suffer for our faith. We're treated differently because of our faith. I think there's seven things in this section that, that Peter points out about suffering for our faith. And I don't really want to dive into it, but I just want to highlight these again. They're on your notes uh, in that. But there's seven things that as we suffer for Christ, we feel like we're suffering for Christ, or we, we feel like we're different, and it's hard to live differently. It's not popular to live differently. We want to be accepted. We want our identity, and a lot of times our identity is in our friendships, and our identity is in what group we're with. And Jesus is telling us that we're going to be different if we're followers of him. And, and sometimes we either internally or externally suffer because of that. Here's seven things. That I think Peter's telling us that we're not surprised when we suffer for Christ. First of all, rejoice in the fact that you're sharing in Christ's suffering. 
Rejoice in the fact that we're sharing in Christ's suffering. What does that look like? What does that mean? That's the point that we're going to talk about a little deeper in just a couple of minutes. The second thing is we'll be able to rejoice when the glory is revealed. We're reminded to keep an eternal perspective, that not to be so focused on what goes on here on earth, but to keep an eternal perspective. And we're going to understand. We're going to experience glory someday. So keep that in mind. Keep that eternal perspective. The second thing is, or the third thing, sorry, uh, being insulted for Christ shows that the Spirit is with us. When we suffer for doing the right things, that shows the Spirit is with us. When we suffer for doing the wrong things, that's just normal. That's, what it, that's the way it should be. When we suffer for doing good, it shows that the Spirit is upon us. Fourthly, we need to allow our suffering to glorify God, and we need to make sure that we're glorifying God in our suffering. Allow your suffering to glorify God and glorify God within your suffering. Uh, allow that suffering to point people to God, to show God to other people, to show them the difference, to show them the difference in your mindset. And you personally learn what it means to glorify God within that suffering. That's a hard lesson, but Peter's reminding us over and over that we need to make sure that that's our mindset. The fifth thing that I see is that suffering shows our fruit. Suffering shows what's, what's really true and what's really important in our lives. You know, Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 6 that a tree is known by its fruit. If you want to know what type of tree it is, especially a fruit tree, you go up and you look at it when it's in season. And you can tell the difference between an apple tree and an orange tree because of the fruit that's on it. You can tell the difference between a, a rose bush and a a lily based on its fruit, based on its flower. Jesus tells us we're going to know the difference when we're suffering for him. It's our fruit that comes out. If we're willing to endure, if we're willing to go through that, if we're willing to glorify God in the midst of it, it shows the fruit that's happening in our lives. Jesus in Matthew chapter 13 tells the parable of the wheat and the weeds. And in the end, it's about what happens when the fruit comes that shows truly, truly whether it's good, the wheat, or bad, a weed. And that's what happens sometimes when we suffer, when we're made different because of our faith. Our fruit comes out, and it shows whether or not we're truly living for God, if we're truly following after Him. The sixth thing I put, you may need to look up a couple of these verses just to clarify this, but we're either saved by fire or we're going to be consumed by fire. You see, there's a refining process that takes place within followers of Jesus. And we talked about this early on in 1 Peter. There's a refining process that takes place. You think about, again, metal when it's refined, it's gold, and silver. It's heated up really, really hot. And all the impurities come to the top and they scrape all that off. It's called the dross. And they scape, scrape off that dross. And then they heat it up again. And more impurities come. They scrape it off. And they keep this process going until finally there's no impurities that come anymore. That's what Jesus does. That's what God does for you and for me. And that's what suffering does. That's what following him does. It, it shows those impurities and it allows God to scrape those things off. That's not an easy process. Purifying is not easy and it's not fun, believe me. But if we allow God to do that, we're refined by fire. And God continues to make us more and more and more pure as we follow him. Or, in the end, those that don't follow God, those that don't follow Jesus, they'll be consumed by God's fire. Hebrews chapter 12 the end of the chapter says, our God is a consuming fire. And it talks about the difference between those who have accepted Jesus and those who have rejected Jesus. And those who have rejected Jesus are going to be consumed by God's fire, consumed by God's wrath. We're either going to be purified by that fire or we're going to be consumed by that fire. As followers of Jesus, we're purified or we're ultimately consumed. Number six, is we're saved by fire, we're consumed by fire. Number seven, suffering allows us to entrust ourselves more deeply to God. 
Suffering allows us to trust and trust ourselves more deeply to God. Again, it's a phrase that we've used, trust the just judge who judges justly. Trust the just judge who judges justly. Suffering allows us to press in a little deeper to God's heart. Suffering and, and pressure and being singled out to, as a follower of Jesus allows us to trust God a little more. We can't trust those around us. We can't trust the circumstances around us. Who are we going to trust? We're going to trust God. And when things aren't fair for doing the right thing, we trust the just judge. And we keep that eternal perspective. Those are the seven things that I saw as I read through these verses in 1 Peter chapter 4. Great reminders, great challenges for me because I need a lot of work in this area. I know you do too. We all do. So we allow God to refine us and purify us. That's why I put in the description section of the YouTube page, our high school YouTube page, the two songs that really stuck with me. Casting Crowns, I Surrender All, and Chris Tomlin, Take My Life. Here am I. And that's really what it means. That's really what following Jesus is all about. It's being willing to identify with Jesus. To identify with not only his suffering, but his life and his lifestyle and his mindset and his priorities. His value and his influence. It wasn't about us. It was about God. It was about the Father. And for us, we have to do the same thing. We need to daily go to God and say, here am I. I surrender it to you. Take me, use me, change me so that I can have the same mindset as Jesus did. I can have the same value and influence as Jesus did. I can have the same view of suffering as Jesus did. I can have the same view of what truly is important as Jesus did. I surrender all those other things and I accept Jesus' worldview and Jesus' value, not as an addition, but as a replacement to what the world tells us, what our natural self tells us, and we follow after God. Let's pray. God, thanks. Thanks for your word and thanks for the reminder that we need to have daily, constantly, over and over and repeatedly. And God, I pray that you would continue to do that. Continue to refine us. And if suffering brings out those impurities, God, I pray that you would wipe those off. And you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God, I pray that you would help us to change our view into your view our view of suffering, our view of influence, our view of value, our view of loyalty, our, our view of relationships. And that, God, we truly would be a reflection of you, that we would be salt that's worthy of what it's made for, of light that shines in the darkness. God, I pray for these students and I pray for their families. I pray, God, that you would continue to teach us and conform us into your image. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you have a good few days, a good week. I hope to see you Wednesday night uh, on our Bible study as we wrap up our Living Jesus series looking at the Sermon on the Mount. God bless. We'll see you guys later.